All right, let's talk about slope intercept form. Slope intercept form is also known as the y equals mx plus b form, but we don't want to call it that because you need to know something's name. You don't go around calling something out of its name. That's going to be its name. When you see it in testing, it's going to have a name. When you use it in conversation, it's going to have a name. And its name means something. Every name of something means something, so it's slope intercept form. It tells you what it's used for. It's used if you have the slope and the y intercept. And so if we have the slope and the y intercept, we want to use slope intercept form. And so, yes, it is y equals mx plus b when m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. Well, let's talk about y-intercept a little bit first because I don't want to go ahead. If I were to have a graph, let's say this line right here on a coordinate plane, this is my y this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis. Wherever this graph crosses that y-axis is known as the y-intercept. If you're a football fan, you know what the word intercept means. It's when somebody unexpectedly picks off a ball or catches a ball when the ball was not intended for them, meaning the ball and them cross paths. This is the same thing here. The y-intercept is where your y-axis cross paths with your line. It's where your y-axis cross paths with your y. So the y-axis is, in, in effect, intercepting the line. All right? And so let's talk about this for a minute here. If I have a slope of 8 and a y-intercept of what number? Negative 3. Negative 3. I can rewrite that out in slope-intercept form. First, let's write out the slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. And b is your y-intercept. And then okay. m is the slope. And so how would I rewrite that out now? Go ahead there, sir. Y equals 8x plus negative 3. Uh -uh. No, we can leave it like that for now because that's a good thing. So we can just talk about how this is rewritten. And so we have y equals 8x plus a negative 3. And then we can realize that these two signs can combine. These two signs. These two signs can combine to make one sign. And which one sign will they make? They'll make a, a positive a positive sign? A, neg a negative. A negative sign. Remember, everything works, everything works in unison. And so we have plus a negative means to subtract. If I have an addition sign here and then I'm taking away a number, it's the same thing as subtraction. And so that is the equation. All right, so now we have a slope of negative 2, a y-intercept of negative 1. Remember the form y equals m x plus b. So we're going to substitute those things in. And so what are we going to put in for m? You're going to put in a negative 2. And what are we going to put in for b? Negative 1. And so I'm going to have y equals a negative 2x minus 1, or as you said before, plus a negative 1. So either one is fine. Let's try another one. If we have a horizontal line, what would be the slope? If the slope is horizontal means it has a run forever, that means it's going, it's going to have a run, but it's not going to have a rise. And when we have no thing, then the rise is zero. So it's going to have a slope of? Zero. Zero. And so if we know then that the horizontal line slope is zero, we can rewrite this out as y equals zero x minus five. Now, Anything times 0 is 0, so that's y equals 0 minus 5, and 0 minus 5 is a negative 5. So really, this is y equals a negative 5. So your graph of a horizontal line will look like this. It'll be y equals a number, an actual value. y equals a numeral. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Ben. Hi. All right. Let's start identifying... Uh, equations from graphs. And so if we remember that we need two things to write a line in slope-intercept form, then all we're looking for in the graph are those two things. We need the slope and the y-intercept. And so if we're looking for the y-intercept, it's easy to find. You look for where your graph crosses the y-axis. 
And so I'm going down the y-axis, looking, 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 looking. It crosses right here. And so I notice it crosses at negative 1, negative 2. B is negative 2. I'm going to use that, <coughs> this point and this point, to find my slope. And so I'm going to rise 1, 2 spaces to get to the same level as the slope. This point, I'm sorry, I'm going to call that <coughs> positive 2 as my rise. And I'm going to run 1, 2, 3 spaces to the right in the positive direction to find the other point. And so if slope is defined as rise over run, I'm going to have a positive 2 over a positive 3. And so my slope is going to equal 2 thirds. Writing it out in slope intercept form, y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. Let's take a look at <coughs> If I'm looking at my y-intercept, I'm looking down. It crosses here. <coughs> 1, 2, 3. B equals 3. Let's look at our slope. I need to go down this time to get to this point. 1, 2, 3. That's a negative 3 because I had to go down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A positive 5 because I went to the right. Rise over run. Negative 3 over a positive 5 is negative 3 fifths. Writing out my equation, y equals a negative 3 fifths x plus 3. Thank you, Ben. Let's graph some of these now. Now remember, if I'm going to graph them, I'm looking for the things that are the slope and the y-intercept. So my y-intercept here is 1, and my slope is 2. M, and here's B. The first thing I'm going to graph is B. The first thing I'm going to graph is B. And so B is 1, looking at the y-axis, where it intercepts, where that cornerback is intercepting that pass, and it's going to be at 1. And then I'm looking at the slope. Now 2 can be rewritten as 2 over 1, two positive numbers. So up two spaces, that's my positive 2, and over to the right 1, that's my positive 1. Plot a point, graph your line. <coughs> sorry. Oh, sorry, but um, when you grab, can, can, can you grab one like with a fraction? Yeah, so let's do one. Is that? I don't see that one with a fraction, but I don't, I don't see one with a fraction, how you graph it. Let's do one with a fraction. <coughs> okay, so let's try y equals a negative four fifths x plus two. How's that? Yes. All right. And so we're gonna start at what number? Two. Uh, Zero. Zero. You, you're going to start at two because start at two. The, the B is two. Your B is two. So, Y axis, where is it going to intercept the pass? At two. There we go. And so, we use a slope of negative four over five. The negative four, now remember, we have a negative fraction. You can assign the negative to any, uh, any part of the fraction you want, the numerator or the denominator. I'm going to go down four spaces. One, two, three, four. 4, that's my negative 4. Then I'm going to go to the right 5 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's my positive 5. And so I've plotted my y-intercept, used my slope, then I need to connect the two points. All done. All right, where do I start with this graph? Sorry, Tim. Two. All right. Yeah. Negative three can be rewritten as what? In order to use the slope. Yeah. Yeah. Negative three over yeah. one. Yeah. Any number can yeah. be placed over one. Yeah. And so, will I go down three spaces or up three spaces? Yeah. And the one will go to the... Right. And so, one, two, three down. Oh, That's wow. my negative three. One to the right, that's my positive one. Mr. Jones. So that is it.